Hi, I'm Chris with LaunchCode, and in this video, we're going to uh, take our next steps in building a Hello Spring application by getting our project set up. We won't actually write any code in this lesson, but we'll get a basic Spring Boot project set up, and we'll talk through the structure and the main components of our project. Um, it's also important that you follow along with me throughout this video series and all the videos here in LC101. Make sure that you're coding along, you've got your hands on the keyboard, and uh, even if that means pausing the video from time to time or reducing the playback speed just so you can keep up, make sure you're doing this along with me. Uh, it's really, really critical that you're actually doing these things in order to properly absorb the concepts. To get started, let's go to a web browser. So um, I'm going to open up my Firefox, and we're going to go to a website called Start. Dot spring dot io. This is a website provided by Spring, and it um, basically allows you to customize a basic Spring Boot application skeleton. So it's going to give us all of the basic files and configurations we need for a minimal application, so we can just get started really, really quickly. There's lots of options we have to select, though. So let's watch. Let's walk through each one of them. The first one is this project option, and this is actually uh, what would be commonly called by Java developers, a build tool. So Maven and Gradle are two different project build tools, and uh, they're related in some ways that we'll learn about later, um, and we'll learn more about Gradle later, but Gradle is indeed gonna be our build tool throughout the rest of this class. So go ahead and make sure you select Gradle. Java should be pre-selected. And then under uh, Spring Boot version, we're going to use a 2.2 version. So yours, depending on when you're accessing the Spring Initializer site, it might have a version different than uh, 2.21. Uh, maybe a higher version. But in any case, uh, any 2.2 version will work fine. Also be sure to check the lesson notes for this video to make sure that um, that we're, we're not upgrading to a newer version um, along with this video. Down in the project metadata section, we're going to just give us uh, some, some information that identifies our project. The group and artifact are both identifiers that we get to customize. In the Java world, the group is usually the URL of the company or organization that you work for backwards. So since this is a launch code class and our website is launchcode.org, we're going to make our group name org.launchcode. The artifact identifier is just the name of the project that we're gonna be building. So in this case, we're gonna make a hello world project for spring. So I'm gonna call this hello spring. Okay, the next section is options. You need to click on this to open it up. And below that, the only change we want to make here is to select Java 13. Finally, the dependency section, we want two dependencies added to our project, the web dependency. So if you type in web, you'll get some suggestions down here below. Spring Web is the dependency we want to select. And then DevTools is the other one. So um, add those two dependencies. You can always add dependencies to your project later, as we'll see. Uh, but this will kind of take some, uh, some of the work out of our hands just to get a quick start. Once you have all these options selected, go ahead and click Generate, and the site will build up a custom zip file based on all the settings you just chose, and you can download that zip file to, uh, to your local computer. Okay, once you have it downloaded, go find it. Uh, might be in your Downloads folder or on your desktop, and unzip the file. And then we just want to move it to a place where we can store it alongside our other projects. So um, I have a folder in my home directory called dev where I keep software projects. So I'm going to move my hello spring directory over there. Okay, great. Now we're ready to um, import our project into IntelliJ. So let's open up IntelliJ. And if you've been using IntelliJ recently, it might open up to a, a pre-existing project. Um, and I think that's going to be the case for me. I was working on a different project earlier today. If that happens, just wait for it to open and then close the project window and you'll get the IntelliJ welcome screen, which is what we really want to see here. So as soon as this opens, I will close my project. And that brings up the welcome screen. Great. From the welcome screen, select Import Project. And that'll bring up a dialog to uh, browse your file system and to go find the project you're looking for. So I'm just going to navigate to my dev folder and then find the Hello Spring folder that I just put there. Select the top level folder and then click Open. And IntelliJ will uh, bring up one more um, dialog here. This should be 
uh, already sort of pre-selected for you, but make sure that you have import project from external model selected along with Gradle. This will tell IntelliJ that we're going to be working with a Gradle project. Um, and what that means will become more clear over time, but at a high level, Gradle is a tool that helps automate um, a lot of the tasks associated with working with a large Java project. And so IntelliJ needs to kind of integrate with Gradle to, to help it do its work. You can click Finish once you have those two settings selected. And the next step will take a few seconds. So IntelliJ is going to be importing the files and it's going to be building its own internal model of our project. It's going to be scanning the file system and that subdirectory and seeing what's there. It's going to be setting up Gradle based on the Gradle configuration and just doing a lot of work that it needs to do to, uh, to help us get ready to code faster and more efficiently. Once IntelliJ has finished fully importing our project, we're ready to take a look around. Uh, the build pane will likely still be open. You can go ahead and click on the build tab at the bottom left to close the build pane. And now let's look at the project pane on the left. There are quite a few files already here. So everything you see here uh, is a file that was downloaded as part of that Spring Initializer generated package. So this is the minimum basic file structure that you need for a Spring Boot project. And it's a lot of files. This is why we use the Spring Initializer. If we wanted to go create all this stuff from scratch, it would be quite a bit of work. So uh, thankfully we don't have to. The most important directories in our project um, are below the source directory. So the source directory will con contain all of the code for our application, and it's divided into two pieces. Main, which is all of the, what you might call um, runtime or production code, the code that's actually needed to make your application run. And there's also a test directory, which is what will contain all of the test code related to your application. So unit tests, integration tests, things like that. Let's look at the main directory a little bit more. So let's expand it by clicking on the, the little expansion arrow. There's two subdirectories of main, Java and resources. Java will contain all of our Java code. That shouldn't be a surprise. Resources will contain all of our um, static code, uh, and, along with some properties and settings files. So let's look at Java first by expanding that. The first package below Java is org.launchcode.hellospring. That might look familiar to you. That's exactly the um, the, the identifiers that we used when we generated our project using the Spring Initializer. So that's going to be the top level package of our application. Everything within our package will live inside of this top level package. If you expand that package, you'll see one class. So right now our application has exactly one class, and uh, that class has one method, which is a main method. So you've already learned that every Java application needs a main method in order to run. And that is no, uh, no, Spring Boot is no exception. So this main method is going to be how we actually run our Spring Boot application. We're not going to run it directly. We're going to run it with Gradle, but uh, it has to be there nonetheless. If you look at the resources folder back on the left and expand that, you've got two subdirectories and a file. Static is a subdirectory that will hold eventually CSS, JavaScript, any images related to our project. Templates is a file as a directory that we'll be using in a couple of lessons, and that will hold time leaf templates that'll help us build the front end of our web application. And then application.properties is a file that is currently empty, but will eventually contain some settings for our application, such as uh, database connection strings or other settings. Okay, so that is really the, the file structure um, of our project. There's one more important file in here, which is the build.gradle file. So it is on the top level of our project structure. It's outside of the source directory, and build.gradle configures the Gradle build tool. And so if you look at this file, there's a lot of stuff in here. It can be pretty confusing and overwhelming at first. Um, that's okay. Don't worry about it. Um, we're going to have a lesson where we talk about Gradle in the future, and there's only a few things that you really need to understand to get started using Gradle right away. The first th thing that you need to know is that Gradle um, helps manage your dependencies. So a dependency of your project is just any third-party library or, or, or plugin that you would want to use within your code. And so as we want to add more functionality to our application, we can pull in additional libraries to help us do that. And you can see in particular there are these top two dependencies. Um, the first one um, ends with Spring Boot Starter Web. That was included based on our selection of um, the Spring Web dependency in the Spring Initializer. <clears throat> J 
Just below that, you can see a dependency that ends in DevTools. That dependency is added based on our selection of the DevTools dependency in the Spring Initializer as well. So and I mentioned before that you can always add dependencies to your project. The way you do that is just to come in here and add new lines to the dependencies section. Now these lines have, obviously have a very specific formatting. We'll learn about what that is and, and how you can um, add new lines to the dependency section in a future lesson. For now, just know that any dependency that you add here is going to be pulled in down from the internet and included in your project um, automatically by Gradle. Looking at the top of the build.gradle file, we see on line nine here a setting called source compatibility. Now recall that when we generated our project structure with the Spring Initializer, we selected Java 13. This is currently a, a bug with the Spring Initializer. Um, this should be 13, instead it's actually 11. So let's go ahead and correct that. We'll just uh, change that version right there. And when we do that, you may see a dialog, as I just did, that uh, prompts you to enable auto import. You do want to do that. Auto import will tell IntelliJ to refresh your project anytime you change your Gradle settings, which is a really useful feature. So go ahead and click on enable auto import. If you didn't see that pop up, I'll show you how to get to that setting in uh, just a second. Okay, so um, to get to that setting manually, what you want to do is to go to your main IntelliJ menu, top left, select Preferences. And within that modal that pops up, there will be a search bar at the top left. Click in the search bar and search for Gradle. And this will scope down the results in the left-hand pane to where you'll see an option below Build, Execution, and Deployment. You'll see Build Tools, and then below that, you'll see Gradle. And this settings pane has a setting in it and it says automatically import this project on changes in build script files or something similar. Uh, notice that that's checked. If that is um, unchecked, make sure you check that. This is how you would manually turn on that setting if that dialog did not pop up for you. Okay. And one more thing we need to do um, to enable Gradle to work properly. I'm going to close my build.gradle file and then go over to the left here. There's a folder here called um, Gradle. Not, notice there's two. One starts with a dot, one does not. We want the one that does not start with a dot. The one here that does not start with the dot is actually going to contain the Gradle application for our project. If we expand the subfolders there, we end up with two files, GradleWrapper.jar, which is the Gradle application itself, and GradleWrapper.properties. Go ahead and open up the properties file. And on line three here, there is a URL that points to a place where IntelliJ can download Gradle. Notice that the version number towards the end of that URL is included, and in my situation here, it's 5.6.4. Um, we need to change this in part because um, Gradle uh, 5 and lower does not support Java 13, which we're using with our project. So if you look at this file and it does not have something version 6 or higher, you need to change it to at least 6.0. So that's what I'm going to do right now. If it's already version 6 or higher, you don't need to do anything with this line. Okay, And then once that's edited, we can close our project, and, and that's great. So now we can go ahead and look at a couple of the common Gradle tasks that we'll be using to run and test our project. So we, I showed you the Gradle file, the build.gradle file here on the left. You can use Gradle as a command line tool, but IntelliJ is a, is a development environment, an integrated development environment, or IDE, which means a lot of the things that you would have to do via the command line it makes available via the user interface. And Gradle is one of those things. On the right-hand side of IntelliJ, there's a little Gradle tab. If you open that up, you'll be able to carry out most of the actions that you would with Gradle via the command line right here in the user interface. In fact, we're not really going to talk about using Gradle at the command line at all, simply because we don't need to. When you open this pane, you'll see a sort of file structure type tree here. Um, and what it really is, is it's organizing the different features of Gradle. The top one source sets, this is going to show you all the dependencies that your project has. We're not going to look at that right now. The second folder, though, is called Tasks. This one is really important. You'll be using this one a lot. The Tasks folder carries out, uh, organizes um, what are called Gradle tasks. These are actions that Gradle can perform on your behalf such as running your application or testing your application. There's a lot of tasks in here in these subfolders, and we're only going to look at two right now. Um, under the application subfolder, there's a boot run task. That will be how, we, how we start our application and run it. And below the verification subfolder, there's a test task. This will run all of the tests in our application. So we're actually going to run the tests uh, right now. There's actually one test in our application that I didn't show you. Let me show you where it is. I'm going to expand in the project pane, source, test, Java, 
and then the package below that and there's a file here called hello spring application tests this is a bare minimum test that basically run, tests that um, our application is configured properly so we'll run this test just to make sure that our our application is ready to go before we start it up so you can start a Gradle task by just double clicking on that task in the Gradle pane And if all goes well here, we'll get uh, a little report that says our test passed, and we'll be able to move on and run our application. Okay, so this did not pass, uh, and this is actually an easily fixable bug. You might see this the first time you run your tests. The, the main message here that we can see um, a few lines down on the right-hand side is, um, could not target platform Java SE 13 using toolchain JDK 9. Uh, that's a little jargony, but basically what it says is that we're running Gradle, uh, which is also a Java application. We're running it using using version 9 of Java, but our application is actually supposed to be targeting version 13. So we need to change the version of Gradle that, or, sorry, the version of Java that Gradle is using. And so let's go ahead and, and do that. Um, to do that, we need to go to the main IntelliJ menu. Go to preferences and just do the same thing as last time search for gradle uh, or it might pop up like it did for me there since that was the last thing i did and down here the gradle jvm setting is the one we need to change from 9 to 13. click apply and then okay and then we can rerun our tests and this time you can you can either run your tests by using the gradle task or you could just click run in the run pane the little green play arrow um, that will always run the most recently run task. And hopefully this time uh, everything will, will come back okay. Great, so we had one test. That test passed. That means our application is configured correctly and we're ready to run it. I'm going to close my run pane, go back to my Gradle pane on the right, and I'm gonna find the boot run task that's under tasks and application, double click on boot run, and boot run will start up our, our uh, Java application, start up Spring Boot, and there's a web server embedded in this called Tomcat, um, and that's actually the web server that will serve our application that will respond to HTTP requests. And part of this Java task, this uh, sorry, this Gradle task is to start up that web server and get it running for us. You'll see some log messages here that happen on startup. When you see the one here at the bottom that I see now, it's kind of cut off on the on the screen, but if you scroll a little to the right, you can see that it ends with started hello spring application. That means that your application started up cleanly and is uh, running and accepting requests. The line above it tells you that Tomcat started on port 8080. That means that if we want to access our web application locally, we need to use localhost colon 8080 to send it requests. If your application failed to start up, you would see uh, an exception stack trace in this pane, and you should read that error message and try to figure out what went wrong. Okay, so now I'm gonna go to a web browser and try to just make a basic request to my application. So I'm gonna type localhost colon 8080. And if all goes well, I'll get an error page, which uh, <laughs> that, might have, that might seem contradictory to you, but this is actually really great. So um, we haven't written any Java code, right? So we shouldn't expect our application to do anything. What it should do is if we make a request to it, it should tell us that it doesn't have anything to give us because we have not set it up to, to handle any requests yet. So this, this error page, and you can actually see the error status code right there, 404, is saying, is our application saying to us, hey, I'm running, but I can't hand you anything. There's nothing I can do to serve your request. So um, while this may uh, seem disconcerting at first, it actually tells us that everything's working exactly as we would expect it to at this point. So in the next video, we'll um, talk about how to set up a basic request handler so we can get rid of this 404.